Hi, so another night, another video. Uh, this one is relatively targeted for once. Um, I have some things here that I'm going to use to make a couple of adapters. Uh, the PC-98 does not appear to use the same joystick pinout as most standard Atari stuff does. Well, actually it does for like the basic four directions and one fire button, but the rest is not quite um, what you might expect. So um, the very basic Atari joystick, um, the only, it's basically, it has all of that, but it's a super set of it because it has a secondary fire button. And um, by fire button, I just mean an additional um, button like this, like the A and B button kind of thing. Uh, and they were called fire buttons in Atari's documentation. I think that's how the name came along. Also, um, this joystick here, um, even though this one in particular is broken, and so I have another coming in the mail because there's some parts that I need that I can't find anywhere. Um, this one in particular has a switch on the bottom, and um, with the switch in the B position, these fire buttons act distinctly from each other. With it in the A position, they both act as the regular Atari fire button. So, um, but this joystick's pinout is, um, with the secondary fire button on pin 5 on the connector, I believe. Um, uh, which is, it's the Comrex one down here on this, uh, chart. Uh, so pin 5 is fire 2. And, um, the PC-98 seems, if, if it uses the same pinout as the MSX, which it seems like maybe it does then uh, the secondary fire button on the PC-98 is probably pin 7. Uh, pin 6 is always the regular Atari fire button. Also pin 5 on um, the PC-98 is 5 volts rather than like being an input. So uh, yeah, I'll need to do something about that. I might actually... For and then I have the Sega one, which uses the fire button number two on pin nine, but is otherwise basically Atari compatible. Um, I think what I'm going to end up doing for that is I'm going to uh, try to power the output from the um, like Sega uh, controller adapter, so that maybe the Genesis pads will work better. I mean, I don't think I'll. Without special programming, I don't think I'd be able to make it detect the A, B, and C buttons, all of them. Because that uses, like, an expanded protocol. Um, which also requires additional buttons, I mean, additional inputs to be read. But, anyway, um, I'm not sure if the Sega Genesis controllers work without the 5 volt power, so I'm going to be redirecting that as well. Sega, I think, also puts it on pin 5, even though I didn't actually remember to mark that here in this picture. Did I update? No, I didn't update the picture. Okay. So, yeah, let me just, uh, verify this real fast. Oh yeah, actually it's right on this page. I don't need to search for it. So yeah, pin 5 is 5 volts on a Sega Master System controller, um, apparently. Which is a subset of what the Genesis controller does. Actually, the Genesis is a superset of the, of the Master System pad. But anyway, so my plan is to make two adapters. Um, one for the Master System style controllers and one for this Comrex joystick, which I'm getting another one of in the mail has this nice feel to it. Uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I've opened it up, and uh, there are tactile buttons under the four directional inputs, and there are springs sitting on top of the tactile buttons, and uh, the lever pushes down on the springs in the different directions, which then press the buttons. So um, you don't have to push very far at all to make it register. Uh, but it has a very nice snappy feel. It feels very similar to like a Model M keyboard or something actually. Which is a lovely feel. So, yeah. 
Um, there are some keyboards that use a similar design to this. Um, the Fujitsu made one that is often called the quote-unquote peerless keyboard online. Uh, those don't feel great because they have a rubber dome under the spring, but this feels fantastic. So I really want this to be a good joystick, despite being a Korean product from the 1980s, um, at a time when Korean electronics were not especially renowned for their um, resilience or reliability. In fact, my Commodore uh, 1942 monitor is also like early 90s Korean technology, and it's been by far the biggest problem child of all of my CRTs that I have. Anyway, modern Korean stuff's a bit better, so I'm not trying to like get anyone in Korea upset. Just, just know that, please. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, I have, um, I decided once again to not actually try to make my own circuit boards or figure out what's involved with printing them. I instead decided to go with, um, some pre-made things. However, this time I found a product that is basically just a pre-assembled board that's meant for doing this with. Uh, let's see if I can focus that any better. Yeah, so um, this just has a female 9-pin um, D-sub on one end and a male one on the other. Then the wires go out, the traces go out to these pins, and then you can jump the pins over to make your own custom mapping of the pin out. So that's exactly what I need here. And I didn't have to like cut any traces like I did with that Mac video adapter thing, which is a very similar project and kind of the inspiration. Shit. <sighs> Just dropped stuff. It'll be fine. I'll just need to remember that I dropped it. Hopefully I'll remember when I'm editing this video, assuming I edit it. Uh, yeah, so like the PC-98 video adapter that I made was obviously the inspiration. But um, yeah, with this one I actually had to remove a whole bunch of components and cut all the traces and then basically wire it all from the beginning. It wasn't meant for doing what I'm doing here. This one, um, if you're interested, uh, they're kind of expensive from the manufacturer, but I found them for like 10 bucks on eBay, listed quote-unquote new old stock. I, I know that they probably still make these things though, so I'm not sure why they have to specify that. My guess is they were just saying, like, we're not using this, this is old stock that we bought that we have no use for, so we're reselling it. Uh, but yeah, it's um, from Elcom. And uh, DJB9MF is the part number for it. And I bought two of them. And they're basically just little D-sub housings. It's like a little kit, basically. Um, you could probably get most of the parts for it on your own, except the circuit board. But for 10 bucks, it was a nice price. So if you can find one for that cheap, go right ahead. Otherwise, I'd maybe suggest trying to fab your own board and find housings other places. I know you can I know you can 3D print these and I think that you can also buy them places like DigiKey. Um yeah. So I'm going to get started on this. Most of the wiring is going to be straight through. It's just going to be like three pins, no, two pins that really need changing ever, um, which are going to be the 5 volt pin and the fire button pin. So this one is the Sega one. I already labeled this um, casing so that I would not lose track and make some bizarre hybrid of the Sega adapter and the Comrex one. Uh, but yeah, so I'm just gonna get started here. Um, iron needs to go on. I think it's plugged in. Yeah, there it is. Takes a minute to boot up. I'm not used to that because uh, my other soldering iron is from the 1980s. And uh, it's a much more single purpose computing system if there's even a real computer in there. Whereas this one seems to use an ST Micro ARM processor. And um, 
seems to have some kind of OS that it runs that it needs to initialize. Uh, I'm guessing that they did not do that in the pace iron that I have from the 80s. But we'll see. Still works great. And um, it's much smaller than the pace, so I'm becoming quite fond of this thing. Even though I'll probably use the pace for larger projects still. Just because uh, they can get hotter and hold heat and make more heat. But this does heat up faster, and uh, it's also much more compact and just smaller and newer, easier to get cheap parts for. Uh, okay, so what am I going to do here? Try to have some method to it. I'm going to use a crap ton of flux. Oh, by the way, um, this is another thing I found out about recently. Uh, so this is basically the first flux I ever had. Um, might even be the actual first tub. It's running low, but it's this Radio Shack, um, rosin soldering flux stuff. And I became really fond of it. And then I bought some other flux that was like this waxy paste thing, which didn't feel right to me and didn't go on anywhere near as well. Um, uh, maybe I just wasn't using it right, but... Whatever the case may be, uh, this is the stuff. It looks kind of Vaseline-like or something. It's a gel more than it is a wax. And uh, there's also little bits of wire fragments and crap in there from years and years of use. But uh, yeah, I'm running low on this. So I, um, after doing a lot of research and just blind grabbing around for clues. Uh, I managed to figure it out. I think maybe someone else has come up with this on their own, but like I did not get their help to do this. So I'm almost certain that the Radio Shack stuff is actually the same as this keg, the C-A-I-G. Um, I don't actually know how it's said. Um, soldering flux that I've got here. Um, Keg, I think, owns the Deoxit brand name as well. Uh, but yeah, I think it's the same. It uses the same kind of flap thing on the, on the um, cover here, on the sticker. Uh, it's the exact same weight, 56 grams. Well, this one says 56.6. This one says 56. But uh, whatever, it's essentially the same. Uh, the two tubs are both labeled as two ounce tubs and they're both made by the same company, Taral Plastics. Um, they obviously are pretty close fits even if the lid has a different texture on this one. This is also much older, it's from like 10 years ago. Uh, yeah, so it's RSF-R80-2 from KEG is what I'm almost certain this is. And I've not opened this yet to verify that, just because I'm trying to run out of this first. But the ingredients list is also the same. Uh, the ingredients list, which I did not see at first, because it's under the flap, I believe. No, oh yeah. So, um, WW Gum Rosin, um, CAS number 8050-09-7, Diethylene glycol, dibutyl, CAS number 112-73-2. Um, Dimerex rosin, uh, CAS number 65997-05-9. And uh, the same ingredients list was on this stuff when I was looking on their website. So I'm almost certain that's the same stuff and that Radio Shack probably was just licensing it from them. Or like uh, having them put their sticker, their label on their product. I also got this no clean stuff just as an experiment, uh, which should be less acidic, probably. I think that's why it's called no clean, basically. So you don't like you don't have to wipe it off the board or anything. But to be honest, after using this for ten years, I've not had any trouble caused by corrosion. It is an activated flux, so it does have some acidity to it, but I'm not especially worried about the regular stuff either. And I do wipe off what I can, I just don't go crazy with it. 
Uh, but the no clean stuff is an experiment that I'm going to try when I'm out of uh, the Radio Shack tub. Uh, so yeah, that's that's definitely a side tangent. Just uh, something I wanted to share with you guys because I saw that um, people were asking about it. Also, um, I've not watched any of his stuff, but Voltar you may have heard of. Um, I met the guy a long time ago before he got famous or whatever he is on um, IRC, the Nest of IRC channel. And um, I mean, I liked him more back then, I'll just say that. But he seems to have a bit of an ego. Whatever, I'm sure I do too. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'm not complaining about him too much. Anyway, my point was that uh, uh, some random person on the internet was looking for flux, and I was searching for like keywords, like kind of the clear, con clear look of this stuff, and the amber color, and uh, everything else. I uh, was looking for what Voltar was using, and it seems like they were describing this stuff. So. If that means anything to you, I guess Voltar also uses the same flux that I decided that I like. Which means now I have to hate it. No, not really. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, that aside, yeah, I, I did um, meet him though, and he was knowledgeable and everything. Uh, did seem, like, like I said, like he had a bit of an ego, but wasn't like a really bad person or anything just didn't get along the best didn't get along the worst either whatever um i kind of resent that he stopped coming on irc when he uh got a platform i think that's really the core of my complaint because i like the informal feel of that channel Kevtris still comes in. Kevtris is quite well known now for the analog stuff, but he was around for the Nest Dev community for years and years and years. So, yeah, he, he's 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 been around, and uh, I've met him in person actually uh, at a ham radio convention a few years ago. I was there with a couple other guys from Nest Dev who live nearby. And uh, we were looking at some Tandy Color Computer 3s, and he uh, just walked past and just had a very short talk with him. Uh, later on, we were going to invite him to lunch, but we couldn't find him in the crowd anymore. But, yeah, that was a neat little thing to just get to meet with him. I think Temple's missed him. <laughs> He went off on his own. But anyway. Name drops are now over. So the wires that they gave with this were kind are kind of long, it seems like. I'm not sure what the reasoning for that is. Uh, I'm just folding them off to the side for now, but I'm hoping that I don't have to like cut anything later. To like make it fit in the housing. It'll probably be fine. So that was pin 9 that I just did. Ah, crap. Pin 9 is one of the ones I have to change. So I already messed up. Okay, so from the the um, mail connector, which is the one that um, the Sega controller plug into, that pin 9 is the fire button number 2. On the PC-98, fire button is number 7. So on this side, the PC-98 side. I'll remelt the solder, pull out the wire, move it over to pin 7, remelt, and reinsert. Here we are. So, that's pin 9 done, which is the, uh, the fire pin. I was trying to use these pads on another video, which I probably not uploaded yet when uh, you'll see this, because I had to do some editing on it and stuff. But, um, and there are also some problems with it, like audio recording issues. But, anyway, um, so during that video, 
I was able to use one of the fire buttons, but not the other, and that made playing a lot of games impossible. So this is my workaround or solution for that. All right, so pin eight doesn't matter what I do for that. Let's do the fire buttons first, actually. So pin six is the other fire button. Pin six is the regular Atari fire button for like the 2600 controllers. This is basically a 2600 controller, um, except it's better because it doesn't break if you look at it funny, and it, it's just a better controller. I do recommend the uh, TAC2 controllers, TAC-2 from Suncom. Uh, they don't make them anymore, but if you can find one, I like them. Um, I've not used the Competition Pro, which is another one that people really like. I think HAP controller, Controls makes that, and they still make it, or maybe they resumed making it, I don't know. Uh, yeah, those are um, well respected, and then I've heard people say nice things about like the Epics, um, EPYX, I think it was like the 500J or 5000J, I had one, um, I recently sold it at a ham radio convention. Um, the same convention, different year than the one I met Kevtris at. Um, so I hope whoever got that is enjoying it. I kind of liked it. I did love the way the joystick felt, but it was a weird right-handed controller where the fire button you need to operate with, like, I think your middle or index finger off to the side of the controller. If, if, if it were shaped like this, I would have fallen in love with it instantly. Uh, anyway, I'll just keep talking while I do this. So I have the two fire pins down, um, six and seven. Then I guess the fire, I mean the five volt pin is going to be pin number five. I should have done the inner ones first. Should I just start over? No, I'm not starting over. I'll probably regret not starting over, but I'm not starting over. Completely unrelated, but I've had Emerson, Lake, and Palmer's Tarkus album, and specifically the suite from the first half of it, just stuck in my head on repeat all day. I guess it's better than having Christmas music stuck in my head, though. Call me a Scrooge, but I don't really love Christmas music. Maybe I would if it didn't always have to use the word Christmas, and like, it wasn't all about the same three subjects, and like, different artists covering the same songs. And Mariah Carey. But... <laughs> Anyway, my dad probably dislikes it more than I do, even. All right. Christmas Day is the one day I can, I can kind of stand it. <laughs> okay, so pin five is connected. It's nice that you basically just have to hop them straight through. I'm going to make the... I'm going to switch the other lens. Why didn't I do this earlier? That was my original plan. It's like, um... Hey, this is the lens, by the way. It's a Canon, uh... FD 50mm lens. 1 to 1.8. Um... It's from a Nikon... A, uh, not Nikon. A Canon AT-1 or an AE-1. In my case, it was the AT-1. Um, I still have that camera. This has got a little adapter on it so I can use it with a more modern camera. Uh, come on. There it goes. And remove the overlay. Tighten up the aperture significantly. Yeah. Loosen it a little. <laughs> it's 
my am I bumping against that? Nah, okay. It seems to be pretty steady again now. Not shaking too much. Alright. So yeah, I've got my solder here. I've got the thing right here. Um I think you can see everything now. Everything important anyway. So um yeah, what I was saying though is it's pretty nice how th this is set up specifically for this. I'm guessing they'll be able to fold the wires over and that's why they didn't make the wires any shorter, but you can just jump them across and there are holes for them to go through. Pretty convenient. I would say make your own if you can't get it for $10, but it's not bad. Um, okay, so what would be pin 9 on the PC98's uh, connector? Okay, so a grounding maybe? And the ground is pin 8 on the master system pad. Uh, no, that's, yeah, yeah, that is pin 9. Pin 9 is ground. So, um, I'll use a black wire. And pin 9 on the PC98 side is this one. I can get the camera in closer, maybe. It'll be tough. Yeah, my main problem is that I don't want to get myself in the way of the camera again. That's why I had it up at that angle before. But maybe this will work. Um, let's tighten up the swivel and focus it in. Sorry if that kind of bothers your eyes, by the way, guys. <sighs> Still figuring this stuff out. Okay, so pin 9 is right there. I already filled in the hole with solder accidentally. So let's just apply the heat, stick it through. I put a whole ton of flux on the underside of this thing uh, when I started, so you can see how brown that is. That's something I should probably just wipe off as I go. but. Yeah. So I've started wiping it, and um, yes, yeah, so there's a little less of it now, but there's still plenty to work with. Uh, if I start having trouble with solder joints again, then I might stop. Um, so pin 9 is ground on the PC98 side. Um, on the MSX. Well, that's the MSX side, so the Sega side, it's pin 8. Yes. Uh, and they're all numbered as well on the PCB. So I don't have to keep double checking that I'm looking at the correct side of the uh, D sub connector. Which is a problem that I have. It's not labeled on both sides of the thing, but it's still quite nice. Okay, I'm going to use this new solder sucker that I got, which is a solder pult, which is a relatively well-known brand, apparently. My first one, I think I got Fry's Electronics when there was still one in Indiana. Uh, don't think there is anymore. I think Indiana wasn't ready for Fry's. Uh, unless they're French fries. No disrespect to people in Indiana, because that includes me. 
but I like to make fun of Indiana. Yeah, that works. Nice. Okay. Yeah, like I said, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer has been in my head for hours and hours. I was drowning out the music at work with my headphones, just playing whatever I could find on my computer desperately and one of them was Tarkus great album if you like progressive rock and that kind of thing or if you think you might like progressive rock and that kind of thing I'd check it out my favorite prog rock would probably be Jethro Tull's Thick as a Brick um, which is just fantastic beginning to end wonderful instrumentation just wonderful melody um, it's one of those things where they went all huge and pretentious and long-winded with it. Uh, so, like, the whole album is too... Um, well, the whole album is basically continuous beginning to end. You have to flip the record if you have the vinyl version, but uh, there are no track separations within that, so within each side. Uh... Okay, so I think besides the five volts and ground, and what what is? Uh, I'm still a little concerned because what is the actual original Atari pinout? Just really fast. Yeah, so pin eight being ground. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is from the Commodore VIC twenty uh, programmer's manual, because like I just found this picture online earlier today randomly. But I have a physical copy of the VIC-20 programmer's manual somewhere. And this just looks very familiar. Like the blue color for the header, the table shape. Um, if it's not the VIC-20, I bet it's another Commodore product. Um, and Commodore definitely used the Atari joystick adapter pinout. Okay, so pin 8 for ground, but on the PC-98, I think that was pin 9? I hope I'm right about this. Hope I don't just like damage something. I do have that bad 86 soundboard that I could plug in to test it. Do I have Yeah, I do have a way. I do have a way to test this without damaging anything. I have another one of these things. Uh if I cut this open, and hook up my multimeter to one of these little handy exposed pins, I should be able to do that. Um, where's my multimeter? Here it is. I have a fluke somewhere, but it needs a new LCD, and so I'm using my cheap Radio Shack thing. Fluke 77, got from my neighbor, who used to be um, a Verizon technician, or engineer, actually, I think. Um, Alright. So, two ways I can think of to try this. First, I'm not sure if the body of the computer uses the same ground as the rest. I'm just going to switch to a wire lens again. And move it back a bit. Okay. Lens is on. There we are. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to be around back. Just wanted you to have a little bit more of a view. I'm also going to rotate the microphone this time so maybe you can hear me better. Maybe I'm learning a little. Crud. One more moment. I think I bumped the HDMI cord on the camera. Okay. Yeah, so I bring the meter around with me. Is that my meter telling me the battery's low? Stupid meter, why are you telling me? I don't know what that meter's telling me. Okay, so ah, more noises. Sorry about that. So I'm just uh, back here where you can't really see me very well. <laughs> And I'm going to try probing the. Gonna try probing the um, PCB with the computer switched on. Okay, so. Time for the test. Pin nine to the metal shell. Is that continuous or contiguous? Hopefully that didn't kill anything, but I just tried. Right, I don't have the video connected. The moment I was worried. So I'm connecting the video, which was not connected before, so I can just make sure I didn't just damage anything. Uh, come on. Alright, so now I'm going around to check the monitor. Though you already know what it looks like. Okay, seeming fine so far. Uh, don't have a keyboard. Make sure it can still play sound. <sighs> the keyboard doesn't work if plugged in after boots. It's just like. It's just like DOS, or like PS2s, I guess, in that sense. But it does work with the original keyboard. Interesting. So there must be like some backwards compatible mode that it can go into for older keyboards. So, yeah, the Epson Rubber Dome board I have uh, does work here. 
It looks a little blue. Let's see if I can fix that. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Uh, so, CD Toho. Uh, oh yeah, C drive. Sounds fine to me. All right, so I've tested that. So I just poked against the uh, DC barrel connector by mistake uh, while searching for a ground point. Now I'm measuring voltage again, instead of continuity. Uh, huh, so there's about 3.7 volts between uh, pin 9 and pin 8, with uh, pin 9 being um, connected to ground. Pin 8 being positive. Interesting. So, on the PC-98, on the PC-98, what is the pinout again? Or what I think the pinout is. Okay, so, out. I forget what the out actually is. Okay, let's let's try um, ground. Let's try pin five and pin nine. That should give us around five volts. I much prefer this to. Uh, sorry about that. I much prefer this to. Um, trying to poke directly at the connectors. Uh, okay, so pin 5 and pin 9. Uh, yep, that's 5 volts. So, yeah, I just wanted to make absolutely certain that the MSX pinout was actually the same as the PC-98 pinout in that respect. Because that is a um, that is an awful risk to take when you're messing around with power lines that you don't recognize. It's weird that'd be different than the Atari in that respect, but I don't know why it's weird. I mean, they're allowed to have their own different standards. Okay, so back to here. Pin 9 is ground. Oh, let's remove the keyboard and uh, switch to the big lens view, the narrow lens view. Okay. Huh, it didn't detect that I removed the lens that time. Or if it did, yeah, it didn't detect it. Huh. Fun. Now it detected it when I inserted the other one. That's cool. Not seen that behavior before. Alright. 
So tighten the aperture. Here we are. So the uh, side for the PC98 has pin five is ground, and um, the other side should be what? Pin eight, so yeah, pin nine to pin eight, and then pin five. Uh, I think that's the same on both. Yeah, that's the same on um, the MSX as on the uh, Master System. Pin five VCC, pin five plus five volts. So that can be straight through. Um, so I have pin 6, I have the, uh, fire 2 button remapped from 9 on the Genesis side to, um, 8 on the other side. Actually, no, I have that going from 8 to 9, not 9 to 8. Come on, wake up. I think that was my soldering iron telling me it was going to go to sleep. Um, not sure if I like that feature or not. Yeah, sure, I am leaving the iron on, which isn't good for it, but... Uh, I just don't like the future always. Um, okay, so pin 8 on the MSX side. Okay, pin... See, I'm getting myself mixed up between like which side is which already again. It's just awful. Okay, so put them next to each other, these tabs. Whichever one is going 9 to 8. None of them go 9 to 8. This goes 9 to 7. Okay, at least I caught it. This won't matter for a regular um, master system pad probably because I don't think there's anything that uses the 5 volts um, from a master system pad. Maybe there is with like the light gun or something, but not with the regular control pad. Uh, the problem would become greater um, using a Mega Drive controller, which is something I want to be able to do because I prefer the D-pad on later Mega Drive Genesis controllers. I will always call it Mega Drive first, though. I don't care what Wikipedia bureaucracy says about the name. By the way, that's a fun one to look into, the um, argument over whether the article name should be Mega Drive or um, Genesis. I argue it should be Mega Drive because the alternative is ignoring all of the non, all of the people who speak English as a secondary language in the world. Um, and anywhere in the world that isn't America, and like the US and Canada, it's the Mega Drive. And may maybe Mexico, I don't know, but it's called Mexico. Um, I know in Brazil it's the Mega Drive. I know it's the Mega Drive in all of Europe, all of, J all of Asia. So I think that the um, Genesis name for the article, which is what it currently is, is very America-centric, and I don't like that. Especially for something that wasn't made in America. <sighs> anyway, whatever. I think that it's Wikipedia editors with stupid bureaucratic rules that don't match reality and inflexibility 
because they have to have their rules, and without rules there'd be no order, and society would collapse. A little bit of an anarchist, I guess. Um, okay, so pin 9 now goes to pin 8, um, which is what I want. And... Damn it, no it's not. I want pin 7. Pin 9 on the Genesis side goes to pin 7. On... Look at my own diagram. Jeez. I guess it's pin 9 on the other one goes to pin 8 on the other one. Uh... I wonder if I'm going to break any of these wire leads flexing around so much before I manage to uh, get this finished. I'm going to move the camera. Maybe you can see it a little better if I put it there, because I seem to actually be soldering in here, roughly. Uh, and focus. Wrong way. There we are. So... I liked my little hand-operated one a lot. The one I could do one-handed without flipping the whole thing over and pushing down. But try to see if I can adapt to this and learn to like it. All right. Now that's cleared off. So pin 9 on Sega side, maybe I should just mark it on the PCB, that'd, that'd be useful. Um, here's Sharpie, S, can I get it to show up any better, maybe on the metal? Yeah. So I just wrote Sega very badly on the metal uh, right there and all right nine eight on the other one maybe that'll help me keep it in order so yeah pin nine to pin seven on the PC 98 side because pin 7 on the PC-98 side is its secondary fire key, or button, or whatever. Uh, there it is. So, that fed through. This could use a little bit more solder on it. I didn't add any when I redid this. And I did suck the old stuff off. Okay. So. Sega pin 9 to pin 7. Um, we have the Sega 5 volts. Uh, yeah, going to 5 volts. We have the Sega ground on pin 8 going to pin 9 which is the ground on the PC-98 side yes okay and so the rest should be all straight through I think except for obviously whatever pin 8 is on the side that isn't the one that pin 8 is ground on we'll, we'll get there when we get there um, up down left and right are pins 1 2 3 and 4 uh, on the PC-98 side. I'm pretty sure on both sides, honestly. Uh, I'll do pin 4 first, because pin 4 is the 
the one that's going to be the hardest to get to later. I believe. Yeah. All right. Here we are. So we got that. Okay, so one, two, and three still need to be done. So let's do pin three, which is also going to be a tight fit. It seem to me. This also wouldn't be a terrible first soldering project as long as you're okay with it not maybe working out well in the end. Well, it wouldn't be a terrible first soldering project as long as you could keep the wiring straight in your head. But the pitch of the pins is good enough for, I think, something close to beginner soldering. A perf board is the other uh, great way. Not like the solderless breadboard, but um, like the perforated board that just has a whole bunch of holes in it. And um, get the kind that has metal pads, like copper pads, on each of, around each of the holes. Doesn't have to be copper, but like some kind of metal, uh, so that you can solder to it. Um, the ones without the uh, metal plating, um, you can still do projects on them. Just you won't be getting the full experience of identifying cold joints and stuff. That's much easier to do on a PCB, in my opinion. All right, so I have pin three on that side done. I need to do pin three on the other side. And it looks like on the other side, pin three has solder in it from some past mistake I made. So did that suck it out? No, it didn't. Pin three. Let's try it again this way. It doesn't try the first time. If it doesn't work right the first time, then just keep trying. And eventually it'll work. Right? I'm not sure I believe that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. Because what appears to be the same thing might not always be the same thing because of the external context. Like, if I were to do something embarrassing in public versus do something embarrassing in private with like an individual that I trusted and felt comfortable doing it with, like, so that would be doing the same thing, but getting different results because it's in different situations. So I've never really liked to when people say the the actual definition of insanity is this, because I don't think that's actually the definition. I think it's one of those kind of urban legend myth things. Uh, probably to get the solder out of this one, I'm going to need to add more if I want to do it from this side. That's a valid technique, by the way. Adding more solder to get the solder to come off. Ah, oh, come on. Just stop moving. Next purchase I need to make is some clamps or something to hold whatever I'm working on steady and stop it from moving. 
Okay, yeah, so that's sucked out. Now I need to do pin two and pin one. On the next one, maybe I'll try doing all the ones that are simple and straight through first. Instead of kind of, do, kind of doing them in whatever order I feel like. Which is what I'm currently doing. Alright. So, there's pin 2. The other side pin two does have solder on it, but I'll just try melting that and see if I can push it through. Maybe. Yeah, that worked. Okay. Use a little more heat. Maybe go down a little bit further if I do that. <laughs> Melted a little bit of the uh, insulation on that wire. quality stuff. I didn't know about that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to clip some of these down while I'm here. This has extra solder on it that doesn't need to be there, so I'm going to wipe that off as much as I can. Here's a quiet video. Yeah, you know, this one is kind of a throwaway, I guess. It's not something that's, well, maybe it's fun to watch. I mean, I don't know what's interesting to other people. Maybe if you just really like to hear me talk, then uh, this will be your thing. Um, right. So pin one now. Alright, there's the first side. Don't know if I did that on camera. Sorry about every time it goes off camera. My ultimate focus right now is just uh, making it work. Getting it to do what I want it to do. Okay, there's another one done, or another one vacuumed off at least, so that now I can do it. Alright, and this, I'm also noticing that some of these wires seem to be pressing up against other wires, so I'm trying to, uh, correct for that now. It's 
stupid. So stupid. It's not solid core wire that they were using, which means it's a little bit harder for me to get in. It's supposed to be pre-tinned, but I guess it got squashed flat and brush tailed. If that's even a word, pretty sure it is. It's a perfectly cromulent word. Maybe it's less brush tailed this way. Come on. Don't make me replace you with Ethernet. Well, that's what I'm going to do, so. Didn't even wait for that. Okay. Really should have used my Leatherman for that. A bit more um, leverage. I'll use it now to pull the, the wires out of the insulation, though. Yeah, there we go. As a bonus, these wires are copper, so maybe they're better than the ones that were inside of here. I'm just doing that for this one wire because it's making me annoyed and I trust this Ethernet wire a lot more. I basically always used Ethernet wire as my project cabling. I do have some magnet wire um, from a science fair project forever ago uh, that's really fine gauge. It's like 24 gauge wire. So sometimes I use that in a pinch. Yeah, that's down here. Uh, yeah, it's 24 gauge. Uh, very fine stuff. So I sometimes use that. Um, instead of like the 18 gauge, I'm guessing, which is probably what this ethernet is. Okay, so the pin in question that I'm trying to do right here is oh it's the one that jumps from pin 9 to pin 8 so that's pin 9 being we're doing this again uh, the ground pin 9 is the ground on the Sega side no pin 9 is the ground on the PC98 side Is that right? Is this pin 3? No, it's pin 6 on the 98 side. No, on the Sega side. So, Sega side pin 6 is the TL pin, which I don't know what that is. So, yeah, I was going to just remove that because I don't know what it means. No, no, 6 is the fire pin, right. So, 6 just goes to 6. Nice and easy. Uh, it looks like maybe I just damaged the uh, silk screen a little bit so I couldn't read it correctly. Or I got it dirty at the very least. Alright. So, pin 6 is the one that I'm replacing. Didn't strip off enough insulation on this end, I guess. Uh, 
There we are. On some flux, maybe. I'll try flux. That's a neat trick. And there it is. And yeah, the flux helped greatly. So now, on the other side, Need to melt this solder to feed it through, fed right through, and seems to have made a pretty good join immediately. Okay, so pin one goes to pin one. That was the other one I was working on before I messed up the blue wire. Yeah, put some flux on that too. This stuff really works. The Radio Shack stuff also smells nice because it's basically just like half pine cone stuff. Um, okay, pin seven is TH, ground on mark three. Yeah, well, I'm not going to connect pin 7 because I don't know what that means. I mean, there's TL and TR, so I'm guessing that's like trigger left, trigger right. Don't know what TH would be. Um, maybe it's for like the um, 3D glasses? Uh, I don't know. Okay, and pin 8 on the other side I'm leaving unpopulated because for the PC98 side because pin 8 on the PC98 side is the quote unquote out pin and I don't know what that means except that it goes out. <laughs> um, so I guess it's time to test this. Uh, here's what it's looking like so far and I'll probably um, eventually just squash the wires down or find some way to make them fit in the casing. For now I'm just going to put it on loose. I'll change the lens out again. There we are. And now, cap on that lens that I just pulled off. I'll plug it in. Right back. took the other adapter that I was probing off so I can make the regular Atari one next. Um, or rather the Comrex one because it uses the different button position. Um, okay, so I need to connect the master system pad. Which is right here. Been a while since I used this thing. Alright. 
if I could more easily, I'd probably use like a plastic housing or plastic shelled um, socket for this. So I wasn't possibly scratching up the plastic around the corners of the connector. But honestly, I want to use my stuff instead of just being too paralyzed by fear of like changing its state to do anything ever. All right. So we're starting it up. I have a master system pad plugged in. Don't think I messed anything up. If the master system pad works, maybe I'll just hop to a Genesis controller. Oops, I said Genesis instead of Mega Drive. Silly me. Uh, I would love to find a Mark III, but the master system and the Mark III apparently have some small differences, apart from the Japanese master system having the FM sound and stuff, even. Like, one of the controller pins being grounded on the Mark III, apparently. Uh, all right. So just doing that didn't seem to have frozen the computer. So I didn't mess anything up that badly. Uh, it's in Kana mode. Let's fix that. Oh yeah. Here we go. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, let me uh, put that up on the screen for you better. Making sure that you can hear me okay. That might be too quiet now. I don't know. Better too quiet than too loud. Um, there we are. Okay, so... So now let's see if both fire buttons work. Well, maybe. We'll see. Okay, yeah. They both work. Nice. So now I have a master system pad that works for Toho. And honestly, the this style D-pad probably works fine for games like this. It's just RPGs where it's kind of overly sensitive. Yeah, it's pretty good. One thing I've wanted for a long time is, um one of these that can, uh... Ah, shit. Yeah, it's still too sensitive. I've wanted one with the joystick thingy that can stick, like... So, uh... There's this, um, cap on the earlier Master System pads. And if you remove it, then, uh, there's a hole under there. And, um, some Master System pads, apparently, and, um, Mark III pads as well. Uh, you, they would come with a joystick thing that's stuck up out of it that you could like put your thumb on and tilt around. And I kind of just want to see how that feels. 
Uh, but it's covered up with a cap here, and they didn't continue to ship them forever, and uh, eventually they replaced this with this, this smooth surface. No cap at all, and no hole. Alright, so for the Comrex pad, I don't think I can actually test it as is if I make it, because the problem with this controller is that I'm lacking, like I'm missing the spring for this return button here to actually click. So maybe if I took it apart I could, but... Yeah. I'm thinking I'm going to uh, take this nice coiled cable from the Comrex controller, um, steal it, put it on this controller, and uh, make this a two-button controller by using the cable that has the extra conductor from the Comrex. And it's coiled, which is really fun. I love coiled cables. Anyway, I'm getting one of these in the mail. Um, for now, I'll work on the second one. Just do it anyway. Uh, I'm pretty sure the TAC-2 just has both fire buttons wired up together. I seem to remember finding a document from back in the day in some magazine scan or something. Or maybe it was just some raw text document that was rating a bunch of sticks. Come on. Come on. Come on. Which one loads first? Archive.org or Atari Compendium? Place your bets. Holy shit, come on. Is my whole this my whole connection just freaking dead right now? Uh no, not quite. Huh, Commodore stick. Poor bastard. Okay, um They're just about as bad as the Atari sticks, by the way. Um Only used one once though. My dad had a word processor in the 80s, but it was a dedicated word processor. An uh, amber screened one. Come on, you son of a bitch. Just, uh. it's still downloading this thing. And so far, it doesn't seem to have found the word tech, too. Uh, page 36. Maybe. Holy crap, come on. Oh, well, this one loaded pretty well, and it's on page 2. Huh, I've never seen the joy sensor before.
wonder if that's like a touchpad-ish thing or if it's something else. I'm guessing it's capacitive sensing. And that you just slide your thumb around on there in the direction you want it to move. Did you know that uh, the uh, TAC-2 uses a tire valve as the return spring? I'm serious, like it's just a rubber tire valve in here. And uh, it's got like a chrome shaft on it, but this is the shaft of the tire valve. So like, I think they actually glued down the top, so I'm not going to keep trying to twist this and break it. Because I've not been able to find the chrome ones for sale, and they also use a different threading than I'm used to from what I've seen online. But it is, I swear to you, just a tire valve in here that sends it back to the middle. It's a really clever design. Uh, but yeah, it, it's... It's not looking like there's any indication of them having multiple fire buttons or anything. And there's no switch on mine, at least. And unfortunately, mine uses a really stupid uh, square-shaped security bit thing. So, uh, what's this I've got here? Okay, this is a security bit box that I've got next to me. Well, it has tri-wing, but it hasn't got a uh, the square shaped bit thing. That's fine. We got confirmation the master system pad works. Um, oh yeah, but we're going to try Genesis pads next before I get on with the soldering. Or get distracted again. What was I doing? What was I doing? Okay, um... Where is that? Uh, I found my American one, but I don't like the American one as much. Even if for whatever reason the D-pad on my American one feels ever so slightly better than the Japanese one, I just really prefer the shape of the Japanese one. So... I'm gonna keep uh, prowling. Oh, here it is. It's literally connected to the Mega Drive. I was using it to play some music CDs on the Sega CD earlier. Ugh. On the off chance that I fry something, I hope it's the Genesis controller, Mega Drive controller, whatever. I've called it both now. I'm going to call them that interchangeably now. Uh, because I should just be able to pull the chip from a different controller, probably. Maybe even just from the American 6 button. And swap it in. Uh, less expensive than killing, an Amiga, killing a PC-98. Here goes nothing. Most of the buttons won't work, by the way, for this pad. Uh, the way that the Genesis does button presses is a little bit weird. Um, so in order to keep backwards compatibility with Master System um, control uh, ports, uh, they made it so one of the pins, I think it might be pin 7? Um, acts as a quote-unquote select um, pin and when that but when that select pin is active then the um, then uh, the key inputs mean different things if I'm understanding correctly uh, crap I need to fix the stupid 
blue tint again. I need to find a way to fasten that down. Okay. Anyway, uh, so when the select key is held, it's kind of like holding shift on a keyboard or some other modifier. That's probably the best way of putting it. And then the six button controllers expand on that, and I think they're just like pulsing the select line in a specific pattern or some, something weird like that in order to get even more buttons. And that's why there's a mode button on the trigger. Um, if you hold that while the system it, while the system is starting up, it should go into like the three button mode, um, in case there's a game that accidentally triggers some function of the six button controller, but is only expecting a three button. Um, that's my understanding anyway. I've never come across a game that needed the mode switch yet, although I know like some games actually used it as an input. Uh, That's fine. Okay. That worked. So both the fire buttons work correctly on the Genesis controller as well. So as long as this thing still works fine on an actual Genesis, we're good. Those stupid things with their projectiles. Yeah, this, this feels much better than the Master System pad. I love Genesis D pads. They're awesome. I'm guessing that the other keys won't work. Uh, yeah, they don't seem to do anything. Not too surprising. Considering the fact that there's no reason for them to work. And then I didn't even wire up a couple pins. There we go. Yay! Yet another, not yet another episode or whatever this is that I'm doing, ending with just me messing around in Toho. You know, I said I hate space shooters. It's growing on me. God damn it! Then that that happens and I lose interest again. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's no way for me to like slow down unless I hold Shift on the keyboard down underneath me. Uh, which is a little annoying, but I guess that's a problem with an actual controller as well. Unless you have the one that acts as a keyboard that like sits in between here. So I still might want one of those. Uh, like the joy card thing or whatever. Accidental shot there. firing, just keep dodging. I think dodging takes priority because of the blue 
bullet things that don't deal very much damage but appear to home in. There we go. Okay. Guess I just had to wait. Yeah, so this still won't work with Atari controllers. Like, the fire button will still be the wrong one for actually being what you want in Toho if you're only having one fire button. And uh, even for ones that have two fire buttons, they don't seem to be what you're looking for. But this is definitely real progress, because now I can use a controller that is good. <laughs> is very good. That is a top tier controller in my opinion. Yeah, the, ah, shit. Yeah, sometimes the, uh, the, uh, slow would be really useful. For making very precise movements. To dodge some of these slow bullets. I don't know what the whole reason for you fighting with these other girls is. Maybe I should actually try to like play the translation or something. I think there is a translation that's been worked on. One of the few PC-98 games, and I guess it's just because it's Toho, which is still... That still has some cultural currency in Japan. And maybe even here, with so many weeps. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh um, Okay, I did pretty well. I, 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 in, I will claim that I did pretty well there. I feel very happy with how well I did dealing with that. Jeez. Yay. <sighs> yeah, this this is just much more comfy to play with the gamepad. I still think it would be fun to try with the joystick, because it is kind of an arcadey kind of game. But honestly, I think D-pads are just superior in a lot of ways. Much more instant input. No, like, throw distance to worry about. Well, no, no tangible, important throw distance to worry about. Alright. Just more reliable. I almost flew right into that bullet. So much visual clutter. My ADHD autistic brain just has trouble with this. Ugh. Also kind of likes it though, I think. 
Ah, uh, damn it. Didn't even see what hit me there. Come on, stop firing at me for one moment. So I can get positioned back where I want to be. Bastards. You little bastards. Damn it, I missed that power up. Whatever it is, I don't know what these power ups actually are or anything. Damn it. The art is also lacking. Compared to a lot of PC 98 games I've seen. But I shouldn't complain. Because it is a very fun one and it's very impressively performant. Even if it is running on like a 75 MHz CPU, unlike most of the PC 98 games I've looked at, which are mostly stationary images. I'm assuming partially on account of its relatively low performance compared to PCs from that period. Damn it! Yeah, I need to figure out more precise control and just get used to doing cardinal direction movements when I need to, instead of trying to do diagonals always. Ah, shit. Yeah, I'll continue. Yeah, I still love that this actually works now, though. Okay, made it. Okay, the second round, there we go. The throwout blade thing is just another scary thing to dodge. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, shit. Third layer. Come on, come on, come on, die. There we go. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. These things have a lot of health. Ah, I should try playing some non-Toho games sometime for you, so you can see that there's more to this than just Toho, which is a common misconception people seem to have, which I'm feeding into. Ah, shit, these things are scary. Holy shit. Okay, at least the CPU is slowing at least the game's slowing down from all the CPU, like, load, though. from below. Ah, uh, they're still coming. 
This will give me a moment to scratch my scalp. Ah, oh, you son of a bitch. When I was looking down, you motherfucker. Just fucking die, you son of a bitch. There you go. <sighs> Sorry for all the cursing. Nothing makes me scared like a game that I'm not good at. Nothing makes me swear like a game I'm not good at either. Part of the reason that I think I picked Toho is because there is a lot of not safe for work stuff on these systems. And uh, sometimes even if you think it's safe for work, it turns out it isn't. And I'd rather not take that chance on something that I've not tried before. Because like the odds are not in your favor, <laughs> probably. Unless you're looking at pretty early stuff. If you're looking at early enough stuff, you might be okay. Okay, boss time. Ah, uh, no, no, not yet. Just like too many of these girls. And they're still coming. Damn it. What the fuck is with these girls? How are there so many of them? Who's been breeding these things? still going. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Incoming? Or did I just pass that? Without incident. I guess I did. This one is terrifying if I remember correctly. I think I saw this one in Toho 2 and just could not win. Yeah, this is the one. I was thinking of this one. Best way to clear out that stupid thing fast. Ah, oh, shit. It's not ready for the second one. Guess I should try save a bomb since I have two lives. Ah, 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 terrifying. Ah! <laughs> it's gonna get worse. It's gonna get worse. It's getting worse. It's worse! Shit. Don't know if I could have even dodged that one without a bomb. Holy fuck. <laughs> I don't think I'd seen that attack before. Let's bomb. I don't know if it's easier in Toho 2 or if I've just played enough of this game that now it's getting a little easier for me. Or if it's a D-pad, because this is actually really nice. Like, this feels comfy. It's completely changed how I feel about this game, honestly. Yeah, so I highly recommend doing this mod. It's quite worth it, in my opinion. I'll, um, I'll check the final pin out for you once I, uh, game over here. Like, game over as in, no longer have continues.
Maybe I'll even draw it up for you. I kind of started doing that. With the D sub things on the side. Like in the green. On my screen. Oh, I missed a one up there, I think, maybe. I guess with the uh, red bullets, the, the optimal fire pattern is to, like when you're not sure what's coming, is to sit dead center as far back as you can so that the spray goes as wide as it can. Oh, fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Fuck. Ah, fuck. When does it end? I guess that was for getting an easy one last time. I think this is as far as I've ever gotten. This boss here. But I said that about the last one, I think. Oh yeah, I remember. It's because it freezes here, and I've not figured out why it freezes here. That's right. Okay, so that's my game over. <laughs> of freezing I'm sure there's a fix for it or like <laughs> it's documented somewhere because it's freaking Toho but um yeah definitely works this did freeze with the keyboard last night I remember this now I was playing just a little bit of it before bed um yeah so that was doing it then too um what to say oh yeah Pin out check. Also, I can put the casing on it. And these flux things I'll put over on my little soldering sponge off to the side there. I'll tighten up my flux container. Since I think I'm done with it for the moment, even though I still have one adapter to make. I think you saw the gist. Sorry about that camera. I forget that things make noise when they fall. Okay, so looks like our final pinout. Uh, let's. So, we were going between the Sega and the PC-98. So... Let's change the screen size, or the um, picture size, if I can. Uh, Okay. I'll make a copy of this section here. Ah, oh, crap, I need to change the background color. There we are. And make a sec copy of this section here. I'll put myself down in a corner. Or up in a corner. All right. Yeah, I'm out of the way there. Um, so yeah, if I do that, and then I have this here, and I crud. Keep on top. There we are. 
Now, how will I do this? Um, okay, so pin five to pin five. This is going to be terrible. Hopefully, you'll be able to figure it out from it, though. This is graphics, too, by the way. It's probably my favorite um, paints or deluxe paint style program. Uh, that isn't the Lux Paint anyway. I do like the Lux Paint a lot as well. But I probably like graphics more because it's open source free software. Whereas the Lux Paint is not. I mean, the source code for I think the first version might have been released by EA a few years ago, but that's the first and worst version. And also, it's still Amiga software. Whereas graphics works on modern computers, as well as in DOS, I think. And Amiga OS, potentially. Um, okay, so pin 5 to pin 5. I guess the way I'm looking at it here, um, it would be, yeah, that this is basically um, the looking in at the connector. Uh, I'll, I'll just type this up. That'll be best. didn't select a font. Not a valid font anyway. And the other one. Okay, so that's the PC98 side. So that one is there. I should probably swap these two. Yeah, if I swap the, these two, then um, the pin 5 is on the correct side. So... Yeah. Now you're just watching me draw pixel art. Isn't this fun? Aren't you glad that you're watching this video? I hope someone is actually enjoying this. Just enjoying hearing me talk about things. Um, I don't want this to be particularly boring, even if I don't know exactly what to do to make it interesting without going to extremely high levels of production quality that I do not have the time for. Um, unfortunately, I would love to have the time for it, but... I gotta eat. Okay, so the Sega side is now... Did I really just not reverse them at all? I think that's exactly what I just did not do. Um, There. Now, pin five to pin five, uh, pin four to pin four, three to three, two to two, one to one, I think. So I think that whole first row is just normal. Uh, yeah, it is. If 
for anyone who's red, green, color blind, I'll try to pick tones of red that aren't the same as the green. Uh, how to do this? Make it closer. I should move them closer together. Move Sega to the outside. Move DE9 to the outside. Fix the number one, which it looks like I cut off prematurely. Yeah, that's what happened here. Okay. There we are. Five. Four. Gotta do these little bunny hop things, which is kind of a sort of standard way of doing it, I guess. Yeah, that'll stand out. Um, just randomly picking colors. Uh, so now this is so terrible. I'll try to redraw this later for you. Um, if I put it in the blog post, which I think I really should, because this is useful info. Not sure if anyone, I'm sure someone must have done this. I just don't know who it would be. <laughs> Make it even worse. Okay. Um... actually pretty close color let's um change that okay now the contrast is kind of bad there we go all these bright kind of quote-unquote feminine looking colors I don't know they work I'm happy with them um, okay so the other row is gonna be the hard one I guess so that's pin six goes to pin six. Okay, so six to six is at least pretty consistent. Six to six. Um, Execute order 66. Head's just full of prequels today. Haven't even watched them in years. Um, 
friend a friend did this to me <laughs> so next the Sega side we skip pin 7 on the Sega side we go to pin 8 and pin 8 goes to pin 9 Oops, that's pin 9. We're going from pin 8 to the other one's pin 9. Isn't this beautiful and totally coherent? I know I love it too. We need more colors. I mean, I know that's, like, not going to happen unless we evolve quite a bit, but it'd be pretty great if we had more colors. More, like, vastly different colors and more color receptors so that we could, um, so you just, like, a broader range of them and have more to differentiate between and choose from. Because I know they're on a spectrum, but the more primaries you have, I would imagine the more other options you have as well. Uh, okay. Someone get science on that. Uh, so, the, yeah, then pin 9 goes to pin 7, I guess. Yeah because that's the fire pin. And that's the whole wiring pin out. Isn't that beautiful? I'll, I'll save this art for future generations to enjoy. Actually, I'll just save it like this so that I can uh, clean it up later and um, have a version of it for you that is sensible. Maybe I'll just, how did I do it for the blog post actually? I think I remember and I think I'm probably not doing it that way again. Maybe I'll just make a table. I think a table would probably be the best way to do this, honestly. but we can peek at it. Um, yeah, so I guess this is what I did here. I drew a table up at one point, but I guess I didn't make it into the final article, or this isn't the final article. This is just like sort of my working copy of it. Oh yeah, speaking of, I'm going to remind a friend of mine. Reminder, write blog. All right, there we go. That's done. <laughs> I'm really eager to see what she has to say. Um, it's really fun to get an insight into how other people think because for me, a lot of stuff that I've, well, it wasn't always obvious to me, but because of just how long I've spent steeped in this stuff, a lot of stuff that seems like obvious to me or like not even worth mentioning, or maybe I don't even think to mention it, is actually really important. Um, but just some, some stuff that I would not think about. It's the little observations. So it's kind of like how a kid will look at the world and maybe like... So I remember when I was little, just riding along on the highway, like looking out the window, and I would look down at the roads that went beside the highway and the buildings that were there and like down below bridges and stuff like that. And as an adult now, I'm so focused on like just getting where I need to go that I don't really think about that stuff too much anymore. 
Um, but except in this context of thinking about how differently people can think about things depending on experience. But it really, I think, is a thing where you your mind can be quote-unquote too highly trained. And that's uh, Douglas Adams' reference uh, with, with totally full of themselves philosophers who um, are wondering why they didn't think of some clever solution. I don't know. I think our minds might be too highly trained. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that that's the um, crazy pin out there. So that's um, pins one through five are... one through five straight connections pin six now pin six is a straight through connection as well so let's just replace that with a six that our brush there we go and now looks like I might need to clean the contact on my right click button on my mouse again this happens once in a while. It's an old IBM scroll point mouse, which I'm, I'm really quite fond of. Maybe I could do a video on these, actually, if I'm so interested in doing videos at the moment. Uh, so, looks like my stream is a little bit, like my camera's a little bit lagged, but yeah, so this is an IBM scroll point mouse. This is a track point. And um, it can scroll up and down and left and right just like a regular track point when you're holding like the middle click on a laptop keyboard and you have it set for scrolling. You can do that with the scroll point in any direction you want. And um, it's really great. I don't think I'll go back to a wheel mouse anytime soon. Unfortunately, they don't make them anymore. Um, Lenovo, I think, stopped making them sometime in the last five years. Maybe the last 10 years, but 2016, I think they still made them. But, yeah, now, now you gotta find them, and they aren't too well documented. And, yeah, I, I do recommend them to anyone who's looking for something interesting to mess with. And something novel. They made them for, like, two decades. Like, I have one with the box for the original revision, which came out in, like, 1996 or 7, I think. So it's about as old as I am. <laughs> But, uh, let's see, what was I doing? Yeah, pins one through six, straightforward connection. Sorry about the tangent with uh, the scroll point. There's another cool thing, though, that I would like to talk about sometime, maybe, if other people are interested. Um, so, and if I just assume that everyone is me, then everyone's interested. Yeah. That'll, that'll work. Okay, so, um... No connection. Ah, 
I'll get the vertical spacing right later. And then Sega's, Sega's pin 9 is pin 7. just explicitly say that there's no connection on PC 98 pin 8. Okay. Yeah, so I guess um, after that minute of silence, <laughs> or it felt like a full minute, um, once I realized I was doing it, and that I'm still recording, um, yeah, so pins 1 through 6 are straight connections, uh, Sega pin 7 not connected, pin 8 goes to pin 9, and pin 9 goes to pin 7, uh, PC98 pin 8 not connected. And that's your pinout. So I'll probably put that in the description and um, for the video. And hopefully I'll remember to put it on the blog post as well. I don't think I'll forget. It seems kind of like a good thing to mention. And I'll update it as well once I have the pinout for uh, the Comrex one established. Although I'm pretty sure the difference will be that... Well, I don't know what I'll be doing with pin 7 on that stick. Probably pins... I mean, pin uh, 9 will be non-connected on the Comrex stick, but we'll see uh, once that comes in. I'm going to wait until I get the one that fully works. And then I'll steal the wiring from that one, use it with the TAC2 like I mentioned. And then I'll have two controllers that have two buttons on them that I can use separately. That sounds good. Anyway, yeah, so um, I guess for the end of this video, first I'm going to synchronize the camera up better. Um, let's see if that's the one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the lag is better now. Don't know why it was so bad before. Okay, so now I'm going to try to um, fold this up somewhat so that it will fit in the uh, chassis or whatever it was that was provided with this. Yeah, since this is just digital data, I think that'll be fine. I don't need to cut the wire shorter if that fits. Um, Okay. So, back down we are, looking at this again. Back down we are. Yoda moments. Okay, um... Any difference between these? Not really. Okay. So let's see if this fits like that. No, it won't. Of course it won't. That'd be too easy. How can we make this harder? I know, let's make the wires way too long. That's a good trick. Okay, now maybe it'll fit with it all squished together on one side instead of wrapping over the edges of the board. Because this is very narrow, and that seems to be what the problem was. So yeah, it looks like that should work now. Um, let me get this way closer. 
it's nice that this lens can do this actually um, yeah so I just have them all scrunched up like that and okay so which side is the Sega side I put the tape on this so like I just want to make sure it was lined up right before I snap it together because this will probably be much harder to unsnap once it's snapped And now I just realized that I did not put the um, the uh, threadings in. Hopefully I can do that now. Like the little screw tether thingies. Not that they matter too much. I'm not even sure if there are screw tethers on the back of the PC actually. Let me peek at that and see if I'm just wasting my time. Yep, I'm wasting my time. So yeah, you won't need the tethers. There aren't any holes for them to anchor in on the back of the PC-98, and um, my controllers certainly don't have them either. So yeah, there's uh, your finalized connector. And, um, oh. It has this little sticker that I might pull off that says Alcom jump, Jumper Box, just to remind you where you bought it, I guess. Um, or who made it. I bought mine on eBay. Um, yeah. Ten bucks, not bad. It's kind of fun to make. I got to monologue a lot. Maybe you learned something. And also, um... Yeah, and I can use, uh, or I can use Genesis controllers. For a large variety of games that use two buttons. And Master System. For however much, however much that matters. <laughs> yeah, I might want to replace this with a plastic ringed thing like I mentioned before. So I don't scratch up the plastic on the connector. But honestly, I'm not too worried about that, like I also said before. So yeah, this sticks out rather far, but this will work as an adapter that I can just plug straight into the back of the system. So yeah, pretty nifty. I think that's it for this video. Um, won't keep you any longer. Uh, I hope you learned a little bit. Hope you kind of had fun maybe watching, or learned a little. I mean, I already said learned a little. Wow, I'm tired. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'll let you know once this thing comes in. And uh, maybe maybe I won't so re record myself soldering the whole next thing, but I'll just tell you how it went and uh, what my impressions are of these things once I actually get to try to use one. Because, like, this is not currently in a usable state. But it just seems so cool. See? Just sounds really cool. So I, I hope that I hope that, that feels as nice as it sounds. And well, I hope it works as nice as it sounds and feels. Is what I probably should say. And apart from that, uh Yeah. Don't think there's anything else. Have a good night guys. Uh thanks for watching again. And um well hopefully see you soon. Let me know if you have questions or comments or like Anything you'd like me to talk about more, or a video you'd like me to make even. Over the Christmas break, I'll be open to suggestions. Um, have a good night. I think that's it now. Bye. Oh, it's still recording. Bye for real. <laughs>